Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Zach, but you guys can call me Hazardous. I'm joined here with iru 399 Hey now, what's going on? And Red Dead 2 videos. Hello, what's up everyone? And in this video, we're joining back in for another collab on Red Dead Redemption. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the pre-orders and the special editions of Red Dead Redemption, since that was the biggest news this week. Among some other things as well we'll get into later in the video. But I guess to start it off, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed, and subscribe to any of our channels if you guys are new. I'll have these guys linked down in the description of my videos, and I'm sure they'll do the same. Um, but I guess we'll just jump into the special edition of Red Dead Redemption. And one of the first pre-order bonuses you get is that war horse. What do you guys think about that? Oh, it's amazing. Really I love cool. that horse, man. I think it's interesting though because like I always think with Rockstar news like this it's the stuff that we don't see that's important so like the horse it's like okay well nice massive great horse and there's another horse you get isn't there the, the black speckled whatever the hell it is it's a race horse like that to me is like oh there are horse breeds in the game so like how many are they going to be 10 12 like it, to me it's like yeah the war horse is cool and all but like does that mean there's going to be a lot of different horses that we can ride and i think that's that's the most interesting thing because like the war horse is big and heavy and like sl probably fairly slow but it'll take you a long way and probably like carry a lot more whereas the other ones like i think it tells you a lot more about what we've not been told about as opposed to like just what you see what do you think mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, great description of the war horse. It's from what you can see on the image. It's a big bulky horse. So, yeah, obviously it's going to be a much slower horse. But obviously it's designed for different things. But what's really interesting is as well, obviously we, we will be able to use them to carry along some, I guess you could say like maybe some coaches or carriages maybe. Or whatever it might be. We could even use them to take back some like dead animals to our campsite as well from the hunted. Definitely. I wonder how, how much we'll be able to customize him, too, in terms of if we can change the, you know, the, the his fur or his coat. Because it says here that he's just an iron gray colored horse. I don't know if it's only that color or if it's going to change at all. But, yeah, like attaching him to stagecoaches would be cool. And just little things like that just to make him more accessible and you can just do more different things with him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I expect... I expect the war horse will be just the war horse. Like, it's a special edition thing. You probably won't get too much for it. Like, it'll just mm -hmm. be the thing. I think um, you can change the saddles and all the rest of it, though. That seems like a thing that could happen. It, I'd like it to be where, you know, in, in, in GTA Five when you go and you change a car, you can put pretty much anything on any car. Like, I wouldn't mind it being a case of, like, you go to plop a saddle on your horse, and it's like, nah, sorry, we, this one doesn't work on this horse. Like, it's designed for a racehorse, not a nice, big, meaty war horse. Like, I kind of like that. Yeah. You could only have certain things for it. And, you know, you can sort of design, like, okay, you'll have your saddle, but you get to pick out of these two or three, you know, because that sort of thing. Just small stuff that adds to the kind of, like, you know, you are in a game still, and like you can't just mm -hmm. do the silliness. This guy is definitely going to have a big saddle too, so you could definitely probably, you know, you could carry more weapons or something like that on the back, as opposed to if you had a more lightweight saddle for a smaller horse, you'd have like a limited weapon selection. But if you're using this guy, you could probably put a shotgun, a, uh, a rifle, and you know, an extra pistol or two on, on there or something like that. I'm also hoping there's, like, characteristics for horses. So, like, the war horse maybe is not quite so uh, frightened. Like, if gunfire goes off and all the rest of it, maybe he doesn't bolt quite as easily. Whereas, like, some of the other horse breeds, maybe they uh, they get a little bit, like, skittish and, like, not quite so easy to ride if, like, there's lots going on. So, like, certain horses excel in certain spots. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. I'm also interested, like, as well, like, if you're under fire from, like, enemies as well, that the war horse will be able to take, you know, that extra bit of damage from the, the guns. Because he's a big, big old horse. <laughs> yeah, he can definitely take a lot of bullets. Or at least you'd hope he can. I mean, for a horse that size. And if he's going to be slower than most of the other horses, and, you know, this is all speculation right now, but... If he is going to turn out to be slower, then he should have some counter to the speed, and that should be extra health or something like that. 
Exactly. Um, or, yeah, just not try and buck you off in a gunfight because this guy's massive and loud noises doesn't scare him. One of my Twitter followers actually asked a question, and I, I kind of touched on it in my Q&A yesterday, but he was wondering about the War Horse. Since it is a special edition horse, there's rumors that if you lose your horse in this game or if it dies or gets shot or you leave it behind, you lose that bond with the horse. So I wonder how that's going to work with this special edition horse. Like, is it specifically, you know, say if this one gets blown up by dynamite, since it's your special edition horse, it's not going to be gone forever, but do you lose all the progress you made with the original one? Or can you just call it again and it's going to be like the same, you know, comfort level as it was before type mm. of thing? Yeah, that's I'm interesting. Hope, yeah. I'm hoping that, with, particularly with the special edition horse, like I don't like the idea of him dying and then that's like, see, uh, you don't get him again. I'd, I'd, I'd like it though to be that if the horse was to die and you got another one that was the same breed, it's a different horse. So you'd have mm -hmm. to sort of retrain it, get better with it, grow it and all the rest of it and become familiar with it. But I don't want it to be ridiculous. Like if he dies, you just never get like that again. It would. I think you'd probably have access to the war horse all the time, but it'd still be a different horse, basically. Because right. otherwise you're paying for something, it dies, you don't get it again. That's Which seems a bit, bit, bit naughty, that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's that would, stuck that would... behind a paywall, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll we'll touch into that in this video as well it's kind of that backlash rockstar is receiving for some of these special editions like the the gang hideout and the bank robbery mission but we'll get into that later in this video the other thing that was um was one of the pre-order bonuses was that outlaw survival kit which is all the key supplies um you know so items to replenish health and dead eye and rue you actually talked about that in one of your videos talking about the core stats and skills in red mm. dead redemption 2 yeah that was yeah. a cool video I like I enjoyed doing that. Cause I didn't see too many people pick up on it. Like that, you've got like you know what is in the the, the base, and I think that like the camping equipment, all you're going to be getting in the special edition is like uh, just something that you you wouldn't get in the game anyway. But there's probably going to be like horses, probably a dozen or so different things you can do with your camp. As the game goes on, you can probably build a bigger one and a nicer one. It's just that the one that you get in the special edition is somehow a little bit different. Like, I you know I don't think it's one of those things that they wouldn't have put in if you didn't, you know, didn't buy the special edition. It's just a, it's some stuff on top, you know. So it's some extra little boost. And as it's single player, it doesn't matter. I don't think. Like, I I'm I'm fine with it all, like the boosts and all the rest of it. Dead Eye seems cool. I I want Dead Eye to be like, a little bit more natural this time. Like I wouldn't mind the time slowdown, but I don't need the screen to go yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's there, that, that was a feature in GTA Five too, right? I oh, I never really was, used um, one of those specials that much. Wasn't uh, wasn't it Michael's? Yeah. Yeah, it was Michael's feature. I can't remember what they called it, but it was effectively bullet time, wasn't it? Like, it was they... something similar. I forget if it was you know you could lock onto people like Dead Eye or or bullet time and Max Payne, or if it was just it slowed down time and allowed yeah, I think, you to. Yeah, I think everything went blue and it slowed down slightly. I don't think you did okay. the lock on like Dead Eye kind of put the X's across, but it definitely slowed stuff down mm -hmm. by a bit. Gotcha. Not quite as slow as Red Dead, but slow. Um, so next up, we have one of the special edition things. So I, I guess we'll jump into this right away since it's first listed on Rockstar's Newswire as well, which is the oh so very controversial <laughs> bank robbery mission and gang hideout oh god um, a lot of fans are pushing back on this because they think rockstar you know is being greedy with their pre-order and special edition bonuses and and a lot of fans are getting this mixed up thinking that these missions and gang hideouts are part of the story um you know fall in with arthur morgan's storyline they think they're not going to be able to get the full experience on it and that's just not true these are just additional bonuses and it's what makes um you know, the this, this special edition, a special edition in and of itself, besides, I mean, there are a few other bonuses thrown in here, like a different horse and an outfit, but if you're going to buy a special edition, you want to make sure, if you're going to spend that 20 to $40 extra, you want to get something out of it, and I think having this extra mission and gang hideout that standard edition players won't have access to is what makes it worth it, they are add or at least comes into play. They're just add-ons. Yeah, add they're just add-ons. Like, I think, was it, ah, that's it, it was Just Cause 3. That's it, it was one of the Just Cause games where you could buy it on day of release 
and there were two or three DLC packs which had already been made and were already available that you could buy. So you could buy the base game and then buy £30 worth of DLC and it would open up weapons, missions, part of the map, etc. And that was like an extra £30. But it was already in the game when they made it. They just decided to not give you it and charge you it a little bit more. That's not what Rockstar are doing here. They are adding more to the game and then charging you for it. Could they have put it in the game before paying? Yeah, probably. But like, there's probably going to be like 50 gang hideouts anyway. One more isn't really like that big of a crime. It just I want to know who's the first person to come out on online and like get the pitchforks out was. <laughs> Because uh, I guarantee it was someone writing an article or someone doing a video, and then it just spread like wildfire. Like it just it confused me because Rockstar do such good stuff that just what this one gang hideout mission just seemed weird. Like I actually saw one uh, one person saying that it was going this gang hideout was going to be in Mexico, but there was only one gang hideout in Mexico, so you couldn't go to Mexico if you didn't buy the special edition. And then, and then I heard people saying that as if it was true. Like, we don't even know that Mexico's going to be in the game fully. Like, it's not, like, confirmed. Yeah. Well, I mean, Rockstar I could... hasn't said anything yet, so you can only assume yeah. just, like, yeah. yeah, you can only assume, really, like, of rumours and what people are talking about. But everything so far that Rockstar mentioned, you know, with the, the bank robbery mission, like, I think people are just getting hanged up too much about it. I mean, I just wouldn't be worried about it because Rockstar aren't the company that would, you know, rip you off in that way. They always add quality and there is plenty to offer, you know, within their games mm. as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we have a company that's been working, or not even just a company, we we have the consolidation of all of Rockstar Studios, every single one, one of their, like, 15 or 20 studios they have worldwide, working on this game for the past eight years. And, you know, it would be nice to get an extra mission and the gang hideout without having to buy the special edition, but in the grand scheme of things, this is something that is really only going to be relevant for the first week. I mean, we have those, you know, little bonuses in other games, and I buy those special editions for that stuff, and then, you know, I use it in the first week, and it's great, and then I, you know, it just becomes old. Um, and so I think that people are getting hung up on this or kind of missing the point that this game is going to be so incredible and so in-depth that it's not even going to matter that this one mission yeah. is a special edition only. And I'm sure this is going to be one of those things, too, where... A month or two down the line, it's going to be offered for like five dollars on the store. Or yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Like, if you think like, if here's an example of when I'd come out and be like, "This is a bit wrong." Let's say there are seven or eight gangs who hold five or six different hideouts each in the game, and Rockstar come out, and the special edition is unlock the Bollard gang gang hideouts for an extra tenner and then when you're in the game and you just bought the base game you rock up to a gang hideout and seven or eight of them turn you away saying you didn't give us extra money you're not allowed to do this that would be bad if there were a lot of them there was a big portion of the game taken away from you because you didn't buy the special edition this is just one extra one it's not like they've taken a whole patch of the game out and now are trying to sell it for more it's just that they've just put another one in and gone, hey, if you fancy it, there you go. Like, it's all digital stuff. Like, it's all, you know, it's just, it's, I'm not annoyed at it. And I could rant about it for hours, so please stop me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a feature that some players will be missing out on, but I don't, it's definitely not a huge part of the game. It's just a bonus. And that is what makes the special edition the special edition. But as a segue into the other content that's offered here, you know, this is all stuff that is that is exclusive to the special edition, like this dappled black thoroughbred, Nuevo Preso gunslinger outfit. And then one of the ones listed at the end here, I actually forgot about these, they get the three weapons free at the gunsmiths, which are, I forget which weapons they are. They're, um, volcanic pistol. action shotgun, volcanic pistol, and then we have, like, a little varmint rifle here. Um, pump action shotgun, I mean, that's that's pretty major. I'm, I'm surprised people aren't up in arms about that. Oh yeah, it, sa it it's sounds free, like a modern gun. Like, <laughs> I think it's free, isn't it? Though, like, so 
free access to. You can probably buy these oh, from the get go, but you'll probably get like a certain amount. And again, it's single player, isn't it? Like if they said that that was for for multiplayer, then it might be a little bit different because it gives you an mm. edge. But because it's single player, like they could just say, "Here you go, start with absolutely everything." Like <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to matter too much. Like, mm -hmm. but the pump action sounds cool. But I wonder, like. Again, Rockstar being Rockstar, like in my head, the volcanic pistol and you know the shotgun and all the rest of it, probably not the best weapons in the game. That to me says more about the stuff that we've not heard of. Mm. Like, yeah, there's probably a lot better weapons that you'll get. It's just if you pay an extra tenner, you get a few of them, you know, a little yeah. earlier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We will get a lot of variety other than them. I was looking at this too. Yeah. So the varmint rifle, you know, it's it's a low powered hunting rifle essentially. It's hunting like small game, like like rodents and stuff in the game. You know, if there's rabbits or the skunks and those things or minks that we saw, that's interesting because I kind of just thought of this now. Is we're gonna need to use that rifle to hunt those smaller animals, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna assume it, it's so we can extract their skin and pelt and sell it, and it's not damaged. So. I'm sure the hunting system is going to be pretty in-depth. Like, if you take down a bear and you unload, like, 50 semi-auto shotgun shells into it, you're not going to be able to sell it for that much because it's just, it's got bullet holes everywhere. Yeah, meat goes So I think bad, it's going to promote, not... like, get a clean kill type of deal. You know, shoot the deer in that spot of the neck that guarantees a kill. Like, if you shoot it in the head, you're going to ruin the the skull. So you can't yeah. really, like, have that and um, things like I, that. And that's I... going to bring down the price. But they've got the opportunity here to make a really, really good open world Rockstar game, but also a really, really good RPG game. Like this idea that you like hunting, you could probably spend hours out just in the wilderness, just going along, trying to get that nice bow to the to the you know the elk neck because there is a spot on the neck, isn't there? If you hit it, it's like a clean insta death Dead, yeah. you know putting them on the back of your horse going back to town like they've got the opportunity to make that a big part of the game just hunting because one thing i found with red dead redemption was once you finished everything there wasn't much to do like you'd have the same um what do i call it there the, the kind of the random events you'd have like the same five or six of those would happen but there wouldn't be much else other than hunting and hunting was just a case of go out find it and go oh look and then shoot it whereas i'm hoping in red dead redemption 2 it's more like like you say you've got to use a particular gun you have to wear certain clothes maybe you can douse yourself in like a scent or something that attracts them you know that sort of stuff because there's um talismans and stuff isn't there that sort of you improve skills based on what you're wearing you know that's got the opportunity to add a lot to the game mm. I think that was mentioned mm -hmm. in an IGN interview that you can use a dead animal to lure newer animals to the scent of the smell. So you could just like sit in the bush or just wait by a tree for that animal to come along so to the decaying animal that's already dead. And then you can take your right. shot. I think that's really interesting. That's like yeah, the fact that you can bait animals like that, that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool, yeah. I was so that's fascinated. Real by life that. levels. That's real life levels of gaming. Like you could just chuck like a rabbit out and just wait and like you're in out in a bush and you gotta wait a little while but eventually one shows up like how cool is that maybe you gotta wait five minutes for something to come along and and see this thing but you know it's coming and it shows up and you're like oh there you go you get your shot and then you realize it's too big to carry back mm. like i'm waiting to be out in the mountains and your horse dies like imagine that you're up out in the middle of nowhere and your horse dies you're like shit how am i getting home now <laughs> whistle like you <laughs> good luck yeah. <laughs> oh man. And then you got the, definitely a lot of cool you features. You got the, the multiplayer stuff as well, haven't you? You've got like a few different things, like the free access to the survivor camp, which is of course like sort of an extension of the solo one, isn't it? That we had earlier. But again, that's no oh, yeah. edge. Like what I look for a multiplayer thing is is an edge, and the only one that looks a little bit dubious is like you just go straight to rank twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Well, and carry on, sorry, D. No, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, I mean, what would the uh, the system in um, Red Dead Redemption Online, the the ranking system, like, it must be like, you know, 
I mean, it must be really easy to probably rank up in that case. Hmm. It was in Red Dead Redemption, I think. Like, you'd get to rank 25 fairly quickly. Like, it wasn't instant, but... Like, again, I don't feel like rank 25 in Red Dead Redemption 2's online is going to be that big of a deal. Like, a few different clothes, maybe. A few different guns. But nothing extreme. Yeah, I don't think it will yeah. have an impact, really, as much. I'm equipment. expecting... I mean, uh, when I first played GTA Online, when it first came out, um, it took me, I, I mean, I was easily level 25 by that weekend because it came out, you know, October 1st or whatever. I think I just grinded the Violent Duct mission like 15 oh, times over that when the, I was 25. the one which it gave you 80 grand? That was Rooftop Rumble, which ah. you needed to be like level 80. And unfortunately, I wasn't high enough. And then when yeah. I was, it got patched. Uh, no, no, no. This, um, I don't think it was Rooftop right? There was one where you'd show up. Um, it was a Gerald mission. Was it the strip club one? like right outside yeah at the back underneath a bridge and like mm -hmm. you yeah that was violent duct <laughs> yeah you didn't have to show up you just show up grab the package and make a fucking run for it and it would literally take a minute and a half and it would be something like 80k and then they like nerfed the shit out of it it started like paying like five grand by the end of the week because you cause it was like, like 10 grand but yeah you it. could complete it in less than two minutes and that was when they still had the replay option for yeah, missions. Just, go again and like every two minutes you were making at first it was i'm pretty sure the figure was like sixty thousand. because i remember hover and a few others got on it's like quick let's get on and do this thing <laughs> we made like 800k and then that was it like but then they they really like rockstar went to town in like making sure that stuff couldn't happen Mm. even now like they made it so it couldn't happen but I remember like r the ranks in, in GTA Online didn't really mean anything to start with yeah, yeah no. it they meant um, the only because the only weapons that really mattered in terms of rank was like that minigun and RPG and that was at level 100 and 120 but everything else you unlocked before level 30 pretty yeah. much I mean you got like the grenade launcher at 70 something but realistically not a lot of players players were using that and we're probably going to have less weapons in this game or at least you know we don't have fully automatic rifles or anything like that besides a gatling gun that's true yeah i'm G sure we'll be able to put on a stagecoach but gta online is cool man like i know people complain about it but i remember being sat in gta 4 just in free roam for many hundreds of hours thinking like wouldn't it be cool if we could just own masonette and run it and now you're like you're doing stuff like that in, in GTA <laughs> you know we are run, gun running businesses coke empires and all that like I just GTA 4's online was so simple and fun but it didn't have depth it was simply like just run around in free roam or do like team deathmatch and stuff true mm, yeah. yeah this is it's truly like you take a role like owning the coke empire or weed farm and things like that or the you know import export exotic card Mm. businesses and things like that it's definitely cool yeah. i'm buying into it a lot recently but well, i hope yeah. there is markets in red dead online that we can sell yeah that's it i was gonna say i'm sure like, we're gonna have businesses with any luck you'd get that in online too and because it won't be rockstar's first time doing it maybe they'll start with this sort of stuff do you know i mean? think maybe, so you know you get in online and there's already a lot of stuff that you can do yeah like i'm sure we're gonna see you know, maybe like gold mining or something. You know, you can you can hire a bunch of people to mine gold in a cave, and like other people can go in and you know like loot the cave or something if you don't pack up all the materials properly or something mm. like that or complete a mission. And it's gonna be little things like that. One of my one of my uh, followers on Twitter brought up farming and just like growing different types of plants to sell to local markets and stuff. And I don't know how in depth any of this stuff is gonna be or if it's even gonna be in the game, but. I'm sure Rockstar is going to take a similar approach in online and have more mm. business DLCs, but we won't, you know, kind of in how we started seeing that in 2016 with GTA 5, we're going to see that in year one for Red Dead Redemption mm -hmm. 2 easily. I, I uh, what was I going to say? I, oh yeah, I'm th thinking like with the heists in single player now, there isn't like, it's not linear. So it's kind of, you just sort of plan it on your own you, and you just go and you do it. You don't have to necessarily have all these crazy loading streets, uh, screens planning and all this, you could just go and do it. I'm really hoping in Red Dead Redemption's online, like me and you two could uh, like just decide, oh, we're just going to go and hold up this pharmacy. 
Mm-hmm. Just because. And then we just go and do it. Like, I would like the idea of of uh, a heist in, G- in Red Dead Online being the equivalent of a gang hideout. You just go and do it. As opposed mm-hmm. to, like, there be, like, okay, now we're adding heists to the game. And you can do this heist or that heist. I like the idea of it just being free-flowing. And you just go and do it because you want to and, and can. So yeah. th- that would be awesome. I think, well. I think that's where the RPG elements would kick in as well. Just, you know, free flow. Yeah, free flowing, no like loading screens, no telling you what to do, you just go and do it. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, you know, you can always go back and try again and correct your errors. Be more of a That's challenge. That's the lovely part of a better game. Exactly, yeah. What do you guys think of the collector's uh, edition as well? Oh, what, I like the, the, the bonuses. Box? I think, um, I mean, I can go into more detail and kind of like what I was expecting and things like that. I would have liked a, a really cool feature in it, like you know, a lot of people wanted a a mini replica revolver or something like that. And I think that would have been cool. I think what's there though is pretty good for a collector's box, even though one hundred dollars is a little bit steep for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for what we're getting, I, the fifty dollar price would have been appropriate considering it sold separately. Because what this means now, since Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game, and then the collector's edition is being sold separately. Rockstar is getting an extra $50 out of players with this, because the GTA 5 collector's edition, you received like the ultimate edition okay. of GTA 5, along with all the all the little spe- um, collector's edition features for $150. And now, since you're buying it separately, if you want the ultimate edition and the collector's edition, it'll be $200. So it's a way that they're able to say, hey, you can buy whichever copy of Red Dead you want, and if you're a real fan of our franchise and our games and stuff like that, you can buy your little collector's box, um, or just one or the other, but if you want to buy both, um, and for that dedicated market of, you know, like that 1% or 2% of players who just buy everything for a game because they love it, um, they're able to kind of kind of string them along and get extra money for them. So uh, that is where I see most of Rockstar's greed coming in, is with this collector's box, not necessarily the special edition. Yeah, I see. I yeah. well, you'd be one of those weird people that buys the collector's edition of every game that was ever launched. I know. I got you. Do you know anyone like that who just buys all of the collector's editions, no matter what they are? Uh, Not personally. No. I, there's a, a couple of people I know, and it's bizarre, man. How they like literally you walk in their room and they've got thousands of pounds worth of stuff, and you're like, oh, what's this? They go, it's a little statue for 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 Modern Warfare Two, and I'm like. Oh, I see. And then, like, you look around, and you realize that all they have are little plastic statues that they paid sixty quid for. <laughs> and uh, but they and yeah, they play the ge- junk. they play the game for a week, finish it, move on. But you know, I was never cool. big on. Sp- yeah, oh, I'm never big on them. They always just seem like little tack on things. Like the best thing for me is the game. Like I kind of like, in a way, that all of the real special edition thing for G uh, for Red Dead is like just digital stuff it's digital bonuses yeah it's good enough for mm-hmm. me well everyone seems to be forgetting that the collector's edition does not include the game mm-hmm. come on yeah a lot of people are yeah a lot of people seem to miss out on that and they pre-order the collector's edition and they're expecting the full game with it no how sad would you be if you opened it up and you realized it wasn't there yeah and it was a lot of yeah a lot of people are like you know kids are gonna buy this and they're gonna get it and you know their parents are gonna waste money etc and that's why i made the video that i did of the buyer beware is because a lot of people were excited for the collector's box mm-hmm. and it definitely should be known that it um you know it doesn't come with the the actual game mm-hmm. not even a download code mm-hmm. or anything rockstar did clarify though <coughs> they put it yeah, up they, on twitter they, and, it, and if you look i mean it is fairly evident it is the collector's box it's not the collector's edition it's just the collector's mm. box. So it's a box that they're selling. It's a bit annoying that they released it all in one go because it makes you think that there's the special ultimate and collector's edition. But the collector's thing is is, is a separate thing. It's not... Do you know what I mean? It's literally just like the equivalent of buying a T-shirt for a game. Like, mm, exactly. Yeah. At this point. And at that point, I don't even know if it's really worth it. You'd have to be a real, like, you know, a re- you know someone who's really into it to want to buy it. How are we doing on yeah. time? I haven't looked. I think we're on oh, a half hour. We're yeah, on we're a half, half hour. We've just hour ticked over to half an hour now. That's intense, man. Yeah, hopefully you guys are still sticking with us in the video. If you are, definitely drop a like. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Sticking with us so long. But, um, yeah, some of the features in this collector's box are cool. Like, 
I think the the Wheeler Rawson and Company catalog, the 150 page booklet that's the replica of the in um, the in game version. That's something I think is worth it in there. Um, if you're into those little cigarette cards that show you know the different heroes and outlaws and things like that, and then the puzzle as well. It's just like neat little things, man. Like I I've, I've always been a bit. Of, I'll admit I've been a bit of a fan of like this is the thing that was in the game. Like I I've been. Uh, going through and watching uh, Star Trek for the last like little while and last year I watched all of the next generation which is like you know a couple hundred hours long or something like that and it was cool and now I'm watching Deep Space Nine which is like serialized and like, seven seasons going through it and all the rest of it I'm like man the, the, the Federation you know, oh it's awesome massive galaxy well I found out that there's like online you can there's an interactive map of the galaxy and it shows you where all the different people are and everything that's going on and like I was soaking that up because it's like an extra little bit it's something more so the idea of like you, you play your game and all the rest of it and then you're looking at oh, oh, there's a magazine there like in the shops and all the rest of it and they're like oh i can i'm actually holding one i can flick through and see what would be there like you could really get yourself into it just by looking at it some of that stuff is cool 100 pound cool maybe not not for me but i see why people would want it because yeah. it is like the box itself is supposed to be the box that the Vandalin gang put their money in and stuff. Like when they make money, they put it in there. You know, I could see that being really cool. Yeah, it is a cool feature. I mean, everything that's that is included is yeah. Really, it's all collectibles just for anyone who, who's into collecting all of that stuff. I mean, it, it's not your gig. If you don't want it, you don't have to get it. No force. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, paywall. That's the biggest man. thing. Is, yeah, they're not forcing you to buy it. That's the takeaway. That's you don't true. have to buy if you don't want it. <laughs> the key takeaway with any of these editions, yeah, it's everything's optional, which is uh, that's I think that's good. Options are always good. I like to have options. I'm gonna have to be a party pooper. I'm gonna have to get going soon. No worries. Well, uh, why don't we end it here? We'll be back next week for another episode. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode, episode number two. Of this oh, Red Dead Redemption 2 discussion with Iru399 and Red Dead 2 videos. Thanks for coming on today, guys. That's um, okay. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was it's, it, last week. It was 20 minutes. This week, it's half an hour. Give it a month, and we're going to be here for four hours. <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> 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 just wait till the game's out, everyone. We're going to have yeah. some cool cool live streams yeah. together and all I that stuff. I just like jumping on and talking to someone that can firstly put up with me talking about it so much because i know i can i can be a bit dominant in conversations i've said this before i can i can get a little bit over the top but like so people that just like it just as much as i do because i can just talk for yeah. hours about a natural stuff, speaker <laughs> yeah some people see it as like fluff like some people hear the word speculation and they're just like <laughs> Uh, no thanks but others are like no it's cool like we're just talking yeah. about stuff that could happen and yeah. you know that's the best like, thing is that yeah. we all have an audience right now where we're all excited for the game and everyone who's watching us is just as excited and i think that's the yeah, coolest man. thing is that everyone's so pumped for this game it is if we're on hazard channel at the moment feel free to comment over to me and of course red dead 2 videos we do stuff basically every day as well i know i like try to do stuff but uh, if you happen to be on my channel, like I said, make sure you check out the other two. Because why? Like, if you like Red Dead and you like videos about it, there's no reason why you shouldn't be subbed to three channels. So, do it. Three times the content. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm seriously looking forward to it. I mean, it's it's gonna be a great game, and I love Red Dead Redemption as much as you guys. It's so fun just getting on here and talking about a game we love really <laughs> after eight Definitely. years of waiting. For Red Dead too. <laughs> yeah. Finally, it's well, coming. Yeah. Very soon, okay. very soon. But yeah, that'll that'll bring us to an end of today's video. Like I said, drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new, and go down in the description. Check out Iru three nine nine Red Dead two videos. They'll be just under the description of this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. See you later. Peace.